How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, here with another new episode of the Chip Tide Show. Now, before we go any further, make sure you're comfortable, maybe get some snacks or something, because I have a feeling that this is going to be a long one. Or, uh, maybe not. Who knows? I haven't written it yet. Well, at least at the time of writing this, I haven't written it yet. But as I am reading this, yes, I have written the whole thing, but this is a confusing bit, huh? I, I suppose I could just come back and change this part if it doesn't end up being that long, but no! I've committed, and I'm sticking to my guns. So, let's not delay with the hijinks in the beginning any longer here, and let's get right into it. Today, we're playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The Wii U version, because that's the one I own. Don't judge me. The Legend of Zelda, the very name inspires wonder and awe in the hearts of every gamer. For decades, we've stepped into the shoes of the green-clad hero who became one of the pillars of the gaming industry. But then, in 2017, Nintendo did something to shake the series to its very core. All trends and tropes that fans were growing weary of were thrown out the window. The very essence of the Zelda franchise was stripped down and rebuilt from the ground up. And what they got? Well, many would argue that it changed the landscape of the gaming industry for good. That's right, Link wears blue now. Oh yeah, and uh, it created a massive open world and drastically changed the gameplay of the series that followed for years. I, uh, I guess that's cool too. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This game was released to the world to near universal acclaim. Heck, it won Game of the Year, but guys, I, uh, I have a confession. I, uh, well, how should I put this? I played this game twice, and I really didn't like it. I know, I know, I know, I must be crazy or something. Believe me, internet, I know. Yes, you cold? Ah! Jesus, you scared the crap out of me. My apologies. I heard you call me, so I came. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Internet. Just, uh, filming another episode of the Chip Tide Show. Oh, splendid! And what game are you playing today? Breath of the Wild. Oh, oh yes! A revolutionary title, one of the best in recent memories. Don't you agree? No, actually, I... Oh, hey, you were able to... Wait. Did you say no? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't really like it. I played it twice, and I didn't even finish the second one because I just got burnt out on it. I... But... But you don't... You, how? This game received near-perfect scores from critics and fans alike. I am afraid that for the first time since... Well, since the last time I was on your show, I am very confused. Me too, honestly. Everybody says that this is an amazing game, and I feel like I should like it, but I just don't. No, no, I refuse to believe that. What specifically about this amazing game can you not like? Um, all of it. All of- What? All of it? No, no, that simply cannot be true. Such a thing is impossible. There must be something in this perfect gaming experience that you find enjoyment in. Well, if you would let... Therefore, I will make it my mission here today to assist you in this most noble endeavor. You know what? Fine. If it makes you happy, go for it. It actually might be nice to have someone actually assist me with something for once, Richard. But what I was going to say was... Let's see where to start. Aha! Simple. The most praised aspect of the game, the open world. Hyrule in this game is bigger than it has ever been. Not only that, 
but it is completely open to the player essentially from the very start of the game. Any place you can see, you can get to. It is complete, unadulterated freedom. What is there to possibly dislike about this? Ah, uh, I don't know. I guess I just never really got all that excited about it. Sure, the massive world is cool, but I kind of got annoyed with it at times. It takes too freaking long to get anywhere. I just wanted to get to the next cool thing, but I had to sprint across miles of grasslands to get there. And don't even get me started on climbing. It is so freaking slow. And if it starts raining, forget it. Time for a bathroom break or something. It was like the whole game was just spam rolling through Hyrule Field on your way to Hyrule Castle where you can start the real game, but then that's just it. Uh, but, but the exploration, the freedom, I... Yeah, yeah, I know, but I never felt like there was anything to incentivize me to explore all the little nooks and crannies instead of just pushing on to the next objective. Ah, well, I can help you there. The game offers countless prizes to reward exploration. You can find weapons and supplies from enemy camps, the mysterious Korok seeds strewn about, and of course there are over 100 shrines. How can you not want to find them all? Even if one of those things doesn't suit your fancy, there's so much to do and see in Hyrule that you're bound to find something cool. Yeah, except that I didn't. Sure, the huge variety of weapons is cool, but do you remember that one Goron in Ocarina of Time who made the giant's knife that broke after like two seconds? Yes. Well, apparently that guy made every single weapon in the game because they all feel like they're made of paper. Here's what happened every time I found a cool new weapon. Whoa, a lightsaber? Awesome! Oh. And the Koroks? I don't know what it is about them, but I think they're the least satisfying things I have ever had to find in a video game. I found one on the Great Plateau in some super obscure spot and was like, oh, that's, uh, that's cool, I guess. What? There's how many of them? 900? Well, looks like I'm never looking for one of those guys again. And then, anytime I saw something strange or out of place in the overworld and fiddled around with it for a bit, I'd be all excited. And then one of these suckers would pop out, and I'd deflate like a balloon. I don't know, maybe it's the annoying jingle that plays, or the fact that they literally give you pieces of poop. But I just can't get behind them. Fine, fine, fine. So you don't like the weapons of the Koroks. I get it. Well, no, actually I don't. But those are just the little things. What about the piece de la Zestoth? The shrines. Over 100 little puzzles to find that all use the same basic tools in a new and unique way and with multiple solutions to figure out. What's not to love? Yeah, I don't really have a problem with what the shrines are. They're all fine. It's what they're not. Because you see, in past Zelda games there were no shrines. Instead, there were temples and dungeons. Far fewer in number, but much longer and more intricate than the one-off shrine puzzles. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I love games that involve puzzles, and the classic Zelda dungeons are about as good as it gets. Staying up late because you're in the depths of a temple, trying to figure out how to get past each clever roadblock as you slowly work your way through, that is the epitome of what I love about single-player games right there. Getting through a particularly tough dungeon is one of the most gratifying things I can think of in a game. And the shrines just don't scratch that itch. I don't know, maybe it's because they all look the same, or the fact that the physics-based mechanics always feel like I'm cheesing the game in some way. But I never felt the same satisfaction when I completed a shrine. I usually go, oh, that was cool, and then completely forget about it 15 minutes later. Ha ha ha, but... Breath of the Wild does have the more traditional temples in the form of the Divine Beasts. Just look at these mechanical menaces roaming the overworld. I'm gonna stop you right there. These things aren't even close to the temples of old, and I'm pretty sure that's not even an unpopular opinion. They're too short, easier than most of the shrines, still look the same from the inside, and all the puzzles just use one base mechanic that isn't really explored to the fullest. 
though I will admit that they look pretty freaking dope in the overworld. But, but, but what about what they represent? You're not just exploring some soulless machine, you're trying to save the spirits of your lost friends. You have to be at least a little bit invested. Friends? Oh, oh you mean the champions that I've never met and who only get one to two little cutscenes of character development? But I do thank you for providing me with the perfect segue into the last problem I had with the game the first time I played it. The story. No! No, please, no! Now, I'm a sucker for a good story in a game. Heck, it doesn't even have to be that good as long as it draws me in. But the story in Breath of the Wild is pretty bare bones. Basically, a hundred years ago, Ganon showed up and there was this big war where the good guys had all these ancient weapons called the Guardians, as well as the four divine beasts controlled by the four aforementioned champions. But Ganon is somehow able to take over all the tech, kills the champions, and nearly kills Link and Zelda. Zelda brings Link to the Shrine of Resurrection, where he wakes up 100 years later with no memories and goes on to defeat Ganon. All this is told through cutscenes that you can find hidden throughout the world, but every time I found one of them, I couldn't help but think, wow, that all looks super cool. I wish I was playing in that time period where stuff actually happened. It all felt a little disjointed, and I found that I didn't really care about any of these characters because I never actually got to interact with them. Heck. I cared far more for the champion descendants that you meet throughout the story simply because you actually get to talk and interact with them. And because I didn't care about any of these so-called important characters, I found that I didn't care that much about trying to help them. I... I am speechless. I did not believe it was possible. But there is truly nothing in this game that you like. I... well, I don't know what to say except that I am sincerely sorry for you. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's not like me to be so negative. But, if you were paying attention, all of these problems were ones that I had upon my first playthrough. And, I'll be honest, when I started playing again in preparation for this episode, I thought it'd be more of the same. But, but it wasn't? Oh no, Mr. Internet. I'm glad to say that this time, I figured it out. I was going into it with the mindset of the old Zelda game, so of course I was disappointed, but now, now my friend, I see the magic. How can that be, you're probably asking? How can a guy who hated the shrines, the story, the overworld, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the soundtrack was pretty disappointing in my eyes, way too minimal, didn't give me a sense of adventure. But how could a guy like me turn around so completely? I'll admit you have my curiosity. Most games are designed basically to lead you from one fun thing to another. It's choreographed, it's purposeful, it works, and I still think I generally prefer it to the more open world games. But while Breath of the Wild doesn't provide you with fun right out the gate on a silver platter, it instead gives you all the tools you need to make your own. The story is super minimal, simplistic, and for me pretty uninteresting, but it doesn't matter because it's not important. It doesn't matter what happened with the champions or what Zelda's doing, because this is your story, and you do whatever you want. So this time, I did just that. This isn't the story of a formerly green-clad hero going off to save the world. No. No, in my case, it's a story of a guy running around with two pets doing cool stuff for no reason at all. It's a story of friendship, daring, the questionable mass hunting of an entire race of Bokoblins who may or may not be evil, or are simply just acting in self-defense. So this is actually one of the few Zelda games in which you can't name yourself, but in the spirit of making our own adventure, I've decided, despite what everyone calls me, this man is no longer Link. Instead, I dub thee Franklin the Great. Why? Because I can! Next! I'd like to introduce you to Rufus, Amiibo dog friend and all-around goodest boy. The Wolf Link Amiibo is literally the only one I own, but what? You thought I was not gonna play the whole game with a dog friend? Uh, no. But Rufus here isn't just for show. He follows me everywhere doing general dog stuff, but he'll also leap into the fray, taking out foes left and right with his fearsome bite. Yes, go Rufus, go! Only downside? He makes sneak attacks 
basically impossible. Every time I came across a big enemy camp, I'd crawl to the edge like a shadow, carefully evaluating the situation and formulating a perfect plan of attack. Wait, wait, no, no, Rufus, come back, come back, stop being so freaking aggressive. But you know what? <laughs> That's no problem, because he also happens to be immortal. It doesn't matter if 100 arrows pierce his flesh and his mortal body is destroyed, because I have the power of Amiibo by my side. By the powers invested in me by the Nintendo gods themselves, I call the goodest of boys back to this realm. Rufus, come to me! Huh. Not gonna lie, did not see that one coming. But no matter, because Rufus isn't the only animal companion I have. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the one, the only, the Black Blur herself. She can tell you exactly what it's like in New York City. It's Delilah. This was literally the very first thing I did after leaving the Great Plateau. I made like 30 stamina potions, googled where the best horses show up, ran all the way over there and got murdered by a bunch of super buff enemies that I definitely wasn't supposed to be fighting yet. And then I found her. After mashing L for like 20 minutes and chugging all those potions like no tomorrow, our ultimate bond of friendship was born. The only problem, she's way faster than Rufus. And to say that he got left behind a lot would be an understatement. And thus, the tale of Franklin, Rufus, and Delilah had begun. They traveled across the land, searching far and wide. For what? I have no idea. Yes, they found their fair share of shrines and Koroks, infiltrated mechanical menaces to slay the servants of Ganon and free their spirits, their long lost friends, yada yada yada. But those weren't the memorable or exciting parts of the journey. When they were ambushed by a bunch of guardians on the plains of Hyrule and got blown the heck up. When they sneakily set fire to an unsuspecting Bokoblin camp for no reason and watched it burn from afar or just riding through the countryside as the sun sets, marveling at the- Wait. Wait, Rufus! Rufus, get over here! And remember what I said about not liking the game's minimalistic soundtrack? Well, you know what? It's 2019! You betcha! I just pulled out my phone and started blaring some epic music of my own. And let me tell you, nothing feels cooler than sprinting through a field, shooting arrows or swinging a lightsaber from the back of your horse at anyone who dares get in your way as your faithful dog trot- Wait, wait Rufus, my dude! The first time I played through this game, I was looking for fun in places where it simply wasn't intended to be. The most memorable parts of my journey weren't the ones set by the game, they were, well, Mine! The things that only I experienced, the things that I did for myself. Is it my favorite game ever? No, it's not even my favorite Zelda game, but I can proudly hold my head high and say loud and clear, I get it. That good enough for you, internet? Yes, yes, precisely! I could not have worded it better myself. Good to hear. So, you promise you won't send your people after me for not liking it at first? Oh, no, no, I cannot promise that, I'm afraid. What? Why not? I thought we had a great thing going there. Jeez, this is exactly like the last time you were on, isn't it? Can't you let me have anything? I apologize, but you are playing on the Wii U version, and in my domain, that is a capital offense. That's... yeah, okay, that's fair. Just kidding, the Wii U is the greatest console of all time, there is nothing you can say to change my mind. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking around to the end of yet another episode of the Chip Tide Show. I know this one was a bit of a roller coaster. I hope it wasn't too all over the place, but if you did enjoy, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more from the show, there are currently six other episodes up on the channel right now with new ones to come every three weeks, Thursdays at 2 p.m. EST. If you feel so inclined, you can hit that subscribe button to get notified when they come out, and you can follow me on Twitter, at the Chip Tide to stay up to date on everything and see what other crazy stuff I get up to on there. Make sure to keep an eye out for the next episode, episode 9, because it's a good one. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.